I'm going to read from God's Word this morning, uh, a passage that Liz has uh, requested. And it's from 1 John, chapter 1, uh, verses 5 to 10. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. That's great. Thank you. Oh, morning, everyone. Let's put this in. It's heavy. Um, good morning, my name's Liz. Um, I serve here as a pastoral care and discipleship elder, and it's absolutely my privilege to be sharing with you this morning. We are covering a big topic. We're talking about repentance this morning, and uh, we're following on from our soul care series, and I just want to do a quick another plug of the book. <clears throat> if you haven't got this yet, um, we've still got copies available in the church office, and it is really worth the read. So that's what we're working from in this series. Um, Before I get into my message, I'd just like to open in some prayer. Father God, I just thank you uh, that you desire to be in just a restored relationship with us. And sometimes we allow things to stop that from happening. So I pray today that we'll just be open, that our hearts will be open to hear what you have to say to us, that we will listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and that we will respond accordingly. We just thank you that your presence is here with us and your words will be spoken this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I want to start by telling you about my two beautiful children. I have two girls. They're six and ten. And they're, you know, doing childhood. They're navigating life and school and friends and family and rules and all the things that you have to do in life. Um, And sometimes they come home and... They say, Mum, this person did this today and it really upset me. And I'll say, okay, what was your response? And it's not because I'm unsympathetic to what's happening or I'm not on their side, but I often tell them, you are responsible for you. You cannot control how other people behave. So it's your response that's important. Sometimes they respond well with grace and humility and they figure it out and I think I'm such a good mom and then other times they respond with anger or some pretty poor decisions and I realize I still have a lot of work to do Um, but the really really great thing about my kids uh, is they do not have poker faces so they will walk out of their classroom at the end of the day and I can just look at them and I know exactly what's happened in their day. There's no hiding it, um, particularly if they've gotten into trouble. And all I have to do is look at them and mum's in the room, you know the mum look. So I just look at them, what happened? And it all comes out straight away. There's just, mum, this happened and I'm so sorry. And, you know, we sit down and we talk it out and we figure it out and we we move on, we get on with our day. Um, But my kids are very rarely hang on to stuff. They're pretty good at, like, getting things out in the open quickly. Um, And I think it's because they've learnt that hanging on to stuff sits really heavy. In their, in their bodies, you know, it just sits heavy. They can't, they sit with this idea of like, I've done something wrong, I actually have to get it out, I have to confess it. Um, but I've noticed as we get older, perhaps we experience a bit of a shift in that, and we're a little bit less likely to confess when we do something wrong. And I wonder if it's because we're a little bit more aware of the consequences of our actions, or maybe we have a greater fear of punishment Um, But somewhere along the way, I think we start hiding things in the dark corners of our soul rather than repenting. And the verse that Pete read for us today, it doesn't tiptoe around this idea. In fact, it says, as followers of Christ, that as children of God, we're called to a different way of living. 
says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. So if we're indeed children of God, then we must live out the truth. And I think it's easy to read this verse and think, I'm not walking in darkness. Like, you know, I make mistakes, but I'm a pretty good person all around and I'm, I'm doing my best. But I think that can be a very dangerous mentality. And look, talking about sin, sin is not a very popular topic. And even just mentioning the word sin from up here, people start going, oh, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this. But I want to tell you, we can't talk about repentance if we don't first acknowledge that it's sin we are repenting from. The problem is we don't talk about sin. And so we make it easy for people to justify their wrong actions and doings. And when John talks about walking in the darkness, I don't think he's just talking about those little mistakes we make along the way. Rob Bramer in the book, Soul Care Book, says this, Repentance is more than just a change in behavior. Biblical repentance is about changing your mind and purpose. It is about changing the way you think. It is about bringing yourself into alignment with God. When your heart, your behavior, your belief system, your thinking deviates from God's ways and doings, your soul gets out of alignment. Confessing our sin, repenting, turning back to God is an acknowledgement that we are not living in alignment with him. We're not living in alignment with his will. And it's even in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer says, your kingdom come, your will be done. Not our will, but God's will. We need to walk in the truth and the light. And earlier I said, we go through this, um, this shift um, and, and we're, we're hesitant to confess, but the, the Lord's Prayer goes on to say that it's not meant to be a one-time or sporadic thing, but a daily rhythm of repentance. The, the Lord's Prayer says, give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts. If we need to ask for our bread daily, then it makes logical sense we also need to ask for repentance. We need to repent daily. We need to have that as a rhythm in our life. What does that look like? First, it's learning to put aside this idea that we look like we have it all together. And it's about humbling ourselves before God and others. We have to put aside our pride. Just like the times I mentioned with my daughter, would hold on to things and would just eat her up inside. We too do damage to our souls when we live in secrecy, when we allow pride or fear to stop us from being honest with ourselves, with God, and with others. Ramah says this, if you're going to walk free, you must not walk in secrecy. It is a powerful thing to be open and honest. There is no healing where there is pretending. And I'm sure you've all heard the saying, you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. Forgiveness, freedom, healing, they cannot happen without our repentance. We have to own up to the times when we've wandered off track and we've walked in the darkness. If I want to be in alignment with God, if I want my soul to be good, I have to unpack some things first. And the first thing I need to unpack is my pride. And my pride is, you know, it's heavy, but it's not too bad. And then the next thing I have to unpack, well, this one's a little bit trickier, but it's my secrets, because I've held on to them for a long time. Okay, now my soul's feeling a little bit lighter. I actually have room for something else in there, something good, and that's this. It's a contrite heart. So that's going to go back into my soul. Now I have room for this. I need to humble myself before God and others. I need to walk in the truth 
And I think sometimes I don't do that because I'm worried about what's going to happen when I own up. And I wonder if you're hesitant of confessing some things because you're afraid of what God's going to think. Here's the thing. Here at Carrie, we sing this song called Good, Good Father, right? And it says that he's a good father. We, we sing this. We say, it's who you are. And if we really believe that, then we have to understand that when God disciplines us, when he tries to correct our course, it isn't because he's trying to bring shame and condemnation to us. It's because he's trying to soften your heart to make you more receptive to him. He's trying to say, hey, this is actually what's blocking our relationship right now. Let's deal with that. We need to restore our relationship with him, and repentance is the way to do that. There is no breakthrough without brokenness. Say that again. There is no breakthrough without brokenness. And friends, it's not easy. It's not easy to step out of the darkness and into the light. To be honest and, and humble, to really admit how broken we are. You know, sometimes I think that's because we think we'll no longer be acceptable to God and others. If people really knew some of the stuff I'd done, they probably wouldn't like me very much anymore. But our verse says otherwise, our verse says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. With one another. It doesn't say we all all of a sudden become unacceptable to each other. Community happens when we are humble with one another and we walk in the light together. But what about when God sees the the dark corners of my soul? I wonder if I'll still be acceptable to him. And you know, in our heads we go, yeah, yeah, we know, like we're covered, it's good. But do we live it from here? Are we actually secure in God's love, in our identity in Christ, when we come to repent? Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This is what Jesus did on the cross. And what I've discovered is that sometimes I don't repent because even though I'm sorry and I want the healing and I want the restoration, I want the freedom from that weight of sin, I hide or I make excuses because I've lost sight of who I am and who God is. I've lost sight of the fact that God's love is unchanging. He doesn't love me more because I've confessed my sin. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, in fact, that Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Rob Bramer puts it perfectly when he says, the beautiful message of the gospel is that though you are deeply flawed, you are even more deeply loved. Though you are deeply flawed, you are even more deeply loved. When I am confident of my acceptance into God's family, when I know I am a loved and cherished child of God, I don't need to fear the light. So my soul's feeling a little bit lighter. I've unpacked my pride, I've unpacked my secrets, I've um, replaced it with a contrite heart, my identity is secure. But often we can still feel like we haven't experienced the freedom that we think forgiveness is supposed to bring us. And for many of us, the heaviest thing we carry in our soul is this one right here. Shame. Shame. And shame is not the same thing as guilt. Brené Brown says shame is a focus on self. Guilt is a focus on behavior. Shame is I am bad. Guilt is I did something bad. Often, we deal with the guilt, 
but we cling to the shame. And it's because we have allowed lies to manifest and affect our identity. I am bad. I am dirty. I am weak. I am undisciplined. I'm not good enough. These are the lies that shame tells us. Brené Brown goes on to say that shame is highly correlated with addiction, depression, violence, aggression, bullying, eating disorders, suicide. Shame says, I am not valuable. I am not worth forgiving. I am not clean. I am not good. But last week, Peter reminded us of the I am statements that God speaks over us. I am chosen. I am a child of God. I am forgiven. I am Christ's friend. I am justified. I am complete in Christ. I am free from condemnation. Friends, we don't need to carry shame around in our souls anymore. Release from shame is the work of the Holy Spirit. And so this morning, um, when I finish, I'm going to give you some time to reflect, to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and respond. This morning, in the safety of God's love and our safe community, we're giving you the time and space to talk to God and to repent, to realign your soul with God and to walk in the freedom of the light. Perhaps as I've been speaking this morning, uh, the Spirit has shone some light into those dark corners of your soul and shown you that maybe there's some unconfessed sin lurking there. Repent. The kingdom of God is near. Perhaps pride has stopped you from owning up to the times when you have chosen your will over God's. And today the Spirit is saying it's time for a realignment. Repent, the kingdom of God is near. Or maybe you have been carrying around shame. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you this morning and take the weight of that shame. You do not need to pay tax on a debt that has been paid. Repent, the kingdom of God is near. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you that you are a good and loving Father. Thank you that you loved us even at our worst, and your love is unchanging. So as we come to you this morning and we offer our repentance, we do so in the security of our identity in you, in your love, in your grace, in your freedom, in your light, in your truth. There is no condemnation here, Lord. There is freedom. Help us to see that. Help us to see the freedom in letting go of the things that we've held on to in the dark corners of our soul. Spirit, I just ask you to speak to those people who need to let go of some things this morning. Give them the courage and the opportunity to come to you in your love and find freedom. We just pray this in your name. Amen. So this morning we've got some stations set up on either side of the auditorium. There's some textures and some pa- um, paper there. And as you feel, as you've um, sat with God for a little bit, the band's just going to play for a while. Um, but when you're ready to bring into the light that thing that God is prompting you today that needs to just come out into the light, you can come and write it on a piece of paper. And we're going to write it in text. And for your safety, just because this is between you and God and not everybody else, when you're done, there's a bucket of water next to the table. And you can fold up that piece of paper and put it in the bucket of water. And of course, that's going to dissolve the writing. So it's just between you and God. No one else has to see that. But there's something beautiful about the fact that it's purifying because that is what Jesus' blood on the cross did for us. So friends, as you just sit in this moment, whenever you're ready, come on up, write down what it is that you need to repent of today and leave it with God and walk out of this place today with a much lighter soul.